So we're glad that you're here. Um, let me tell you a little bit about who we are and try to give you a little bit of uh, reason to believe a little credibility of what I'm going to talk about over the next few minutes. My wife and I moved to Tampa in 2013, and we didn't know anybody in the city, moved with a heart to plant a church. And uh, I'm telling you, it's been a dream of ours to see what God's done, and God has done some amazing things. Because we planted there, Tampa has now won the Stanley Cup, the World Ser- we are a part of the World Series, and now uh, we have now won the Super Bowl. So we say it's either because we planted Radiant Church or Tom Brady came to Tampa. One of the two is the reasons that we, uh, our city is thriving. So we planted the, the church, um, started in a rundown old dollar theater, didn't know anybody, hoped and prayed people would show up. And then um, as the church continued to grow, we added a second service and third, th- three services, four services. We were doing four services in the Dollar Theater before we planted our first campus, uh, which was about three years into um, the launch. So we planted one about 10 minutes away. Everything I'm going to teach you today is all the lessons we learned that I wish somebody would have taught me before we launched our first campus because uh, my team is so gracious. Some of them are on the front row right here. I told them to go to another breakout session because they have nothing to learn in this session because they've lived this. But I think they're trying to suck up and just get a little bit of credit for their their world. But um, we learned a lot of lessons. And every time we've done this, we've evaluated it, tweaked it, and redid it again. And so then we launched another location, another location, another location. Until um, last, uh, six weeks ago, we launched our sixth location. And so I want you to know, thank you for the three that clapped. That's a, I think it's a big deal. So by the way, we launched that location in the pandemic, which was crazy. Um, 25 minutes north of our broadcast site um, in a high school, uh, only in Florida can you still get into a high school right now, to God be the glory for our governor. So we, we, we launched in there. And so we learned a lot of lessons. And so what we want to do for you guys, we know with a room, uh, this, with this many leaders in a room and this many people, there's probably a lot of you guys that you go, okay, we, we, we've launched, we've got a church and we feel like God's put it in our heart to multiply. I want you to know if you don't get anything else out of this session, here's what I want you to get. We want to help you. I'll say it again. If you want to launch your, uh, f- your first site, I want you to know we want to help you. What we've done as a church is we have put together our team of people that their primary goal is to resource you guys to make sure that you are able to launch your first location outside of your main site strong and well and we wanna help you do it. So what we've done is we put together a resource site that all the material that I'm talking about today is on. It's still in the works, but it's got a lot of information for you. So let's throw that QR code up because I don't want you just following along, taking crazy notes. I want you actually scanning this and you can um, follow along on what we call the the leader playbook. Um, I think we got one, we're gonna try it. There it is right there. So let's try it. We haven't even tried it in this room. Does it work? Um, and if it works, do we got a thumbs up? It works. Perfect. So if you go to that site, what you're going to look at is you are going to go, it says radiant resources. You're going to go to the playbook preview, which we said preview because it's our rough draft of this. And, um, that's the material I'm going to run through right now. And I want you to follow along with me. You can download this. You can take it um, if you want another file so you can make it your own. The goal with this is that we wanted to create a playbook for you guys of what we do right now. And we're going to be dropping, dropping tons of more content on this to help you take some next steps in launching your first site. So let's just run through it. I, I, we put together a five-step plan. And because I'm a preacher, all of these start with the same letter. So we have to do that. So let's, let's run through it. And first of all, we're going to start with number one is before you launch your first, um, ex- we're going to call it your first site. We understand you already have one, one location. So you're, before you launch your, your second location, here's what you do. Number one is you got to evaluate. Is what you're doing worth duplicating? You have to understand that you launching a, it's like, it's like having children. Children only multiply your already issues that you have. So a lot of people think, you know, having kids is going to solve your marriage problems. No, it's just going to magnify them. So if you have issues right now, if you go, nobody comes to our, our church, launching a second location is not going to fix that. 
So you have to, first of all, evaluate. Is what we're doing worth it? Is it working? Is, is it, are we seeing growth? In our approach, launching locations is not a uh, way to grow the church. It's a way to deal with an already growing church. Let me say that again. Launching locations is not a way to grow a church. It's a way to deal with an already growing church. So if you're already growing, this will work for you. Um, here's how we evaluate as we ask ourselves this question. It's right there in your playbook. Is what's the lowest hole? What's the reason? If, if you've reached 300, what's the reason you're not 400? And I, I don't think you should you know, get depressed over this. I think you should figure it out. So we've been able to, um, to grow as a church. And I honestly think we, you have to have honest evaluations. What's our lowest hole? And then here's a great question that we're constantly asking as a team. Before we ever try to expand, we're trying to figure out what if fixed could make the biggest difference in our church. So is it your children's ministry? Is it the uh, worship? Is it the preaching? There's a lot of things that you, you need to get some other eyes on it. By the way, one of the best ways we have found to evaluate and step one here is to get a set of eyes that are outside of our church. So we've hired different companies. They, you can call, they call themselves um, secret shoppers. Another easy way is just to, to pay a friend said, listen, I want you to show up and I don't want you to tell anybody, but I want you to act like a guest, walk around, go check your kids in, cause some problems. I want to see if our systems are actually working. You need to evaluate first. If what you're doing is working, then let's duplicate it. All right. So number one is we're evaluating. What are we evaluating? We put it down as four F words. Number one is food. Am I giving people a healthy meal that's from God's word in a gauging way? Number two is flow. Do we have a flow in and out of our service? Is parking good? Is the way that we, you drop off your kids good? Third one is friendliness. Are people nice at your church? Um, it's the difference between going to Burger King and going to Chick-fil-A. Come on, can I get a good amen? Like you go, to, I went to Burger King the other night. I, I felt like I was an inconvenience to be in Burger King. They were just mean. You go to Chick-fil-A, they're like changing the oil in my car at the same time. It's just, it's just a different world. Be that church. And, and we say it this way, people don't want a friendly church. They want friends at church. Do you have an environment where people are actually getting connected? And then the last one is simply, do you have a follow-up system? Is there some kind of way you're getting people connected? So I, got, I believe we have those four. We'll just throw them up there. If you're not taking notes, you can maybe uh, take a picture of those. This is what we're constantly evaluating. Food, are we giving them good material? Um, get good... Uh, uh, sermons, get good content from God's word, the flow of what we're doing, our friendliness and our follow-up, evaluate those things. All right, so now you figure out what we're doing is working. Now what's our next step? This is kind of where a lot of you guys are at, and here's um, step two is what we call envision. Envision what is the potentials out there? What are we looking for? You're, you're dreaming together. It probably came to some of you guys during a season of prayer and fasting where you're envisioning going, I feel like what we're doing is so healthy. How can we do it in another um, another community, another place. We look at this and we envision, and we go, where is our church already existing in a community that we need to now plant a location in? You're envisioning, it's one of those things, I believe God gives you a supernatural love for communities. So when we planted, and if you know Tampa, which you don't need to know Tampa, but in Tampa, there was a community called South Tampa. God gave me a supernatural love for it. So then our second location was during a time I was praying and I saw all the development in our downtown area. God gave us a love for it. Our third location was in St. Petersburg. And we just have such a heart for it, a love for it. Where is that place God's putting a heart for you? So, and then the question is, is when you're envisioning this, is where are people right now driving into your church from a distance? I said this yesterday to some leaders, and I want you to get this. There's no such thing anymore, in my opinion, with the amount of urbanization. So if you're in a city setting, whether you're suburbs, anywhere, I do not believe, and this is a strong statement, hear me out, I do not there, believe there's such a thing as a regional church anymore. So people say, oh, our church pulls from all over the city. I don't think that's the case. I think your church might bring one and two people from different communities in that city. But your church is not reaching other communities. Your church is truly reaching the community you're in. So what we found is we might have a few people or a few dozen people making the drive from another community, but we're not really reaching that community until we plant a campus there. So here's the phrase we live by in our church, and I want you to get this. This is our multi-site phrase. 
is simply this, for the local church to be effective, it has to be local. Let me say it again. For the local church to be effective, it has to be local. So what does that mean? It has to be in a community. So we have a dream in our heart of planning 10 campuses in Tampa Bay. We call it 10K for Tampa Bay. 10 campuses reaching 10,000 people by our 10-year anniversary. That's the vision God's put in front of us. Now, we're not trying to plant campuses all over America. We're trying to saturate Tampa Bay because we understand we have the potential to reach in those communities uh, where we're at. So we're envisioning. So what are we doing? We're looking 12 months out, nine to 12 months out. We put a list. It's right there in your, um, in your uh, playbook. We could throw it up there on the screen if we have it of just the things we're looking for. Let me just, these are some of the metrics that we're looking for that you need to be pulling from. Households, people are attending. They've checked their kids in. Um, individuals, their dream team members. Here's another one. We do an Easter survey every year. People ask us, why do you do it on Easter? Here's the reason, because everybody shows up on Easter. It's the one Sunday everybody's in the room. So when, when we do an Easter survey, one of the questions on it is, if Radiant Church was to launch a location, what community should we go to? So we get our responses from those, and guess what? That helps us decide our next communities. So we've got a list of communities we're going towards. We're not shooting in the dark. We're going because that's the need that people in our and our church are already presenting to us. Here's another one is we look at where the givers are at. You don't want to plant a church in a community that you don't have people already able in that community that can fund it. We look at where groups are at. And when if you have the ability to pull your online metrics, we're just getting to that place now, where now we can look at it going, where's pockets of people that are watching online and uh, pull those metrics. So we're looking at wh- ways that we can do it. All right, now we're going to go into establishing. So we have evaluated. We have now um, envisioned what is possible. And then, um, and, we're, and you'll see on there, there's some links for some other things I'll get to in a second. And then we get to a place called establish. Establish is you've picked your community. Now we're ready to run the play. What we've done for you guys is we've given you a play. Can I encourage you? I want everybody to look up. I know y'all, y'all are... Y'all are the best leaders because you've already done a great uh, campus and you're ready to launch a second one. Don't get creative. I understand everybody wants to be creative. Everybody wants to do something nobody's done before. We are at six campuses and we're just starting to get creative. Here's what I believe. The first person in heaven was the thief on the cross. Steal away. Steal, steal, steal. Take what we've done, make it your own, and when that works, think it creative down the road. There is no reason to reinvent the wheel. So just find what other people have done. We're going to give you what our playbook is. It's right here. And run it. And we just realized we made it work. I'll give you a little of the behind the scenes. Numbers aren't everything, but they are important. Our first campus launched around about 300. Our second one was about 650, 675. I don't have the exact numbers. Our third one was, we were 812. And then we launched one, um, a brand new location was 11 or 1,000, 1,100 something people. And then we launched North Tampa during the pandemic a few weeks ago at 400 people. So I'm just saying the playbook works. So I want to have the, all of those campuses were over 500 pre-COVID. So it's a, it's, a, it's a world that works. So let me tell you how to establish, okay? Here's what, we look for six triggers to where we can say, if we get these six things done, then we're ready to launch a campus. By the way, if you're missing one of these six, don't launch yet. So we waited for these six. We actually delayed our North Tampa launch, our, which is our newest one, uh, four months for the purpose of that we just weren't ready with some of these Part of that was COVID. All right, number one is area. What part of town um, um, that metrics or God is drawing us to? Notice I put the God card in there because there is a thus saith the Lord. It doesn't make sense, but God's saying to go there. I love that idea. I think it's really important if God says do it, but it should, it should make sense sometimes that there's also people already in that community if possible. Number two, and this one, what I would say is the most important. The question is constantly asked, what is the number one thing that makes or breaks a multi-site church? And I would say this is the most important one. Do you have the person to lead it? Do you have the person to lead it? We put together, and I'm just going to spend a few minutes on this, we put together what we call a location pastor profile. 
why don't we throw that picture up there on the screen? Because I want you to take a picture of it. It's, it's all I words because I'm a preacher. And so I want you to see this because this is the location pastor profile. This is who we're looking for. And it's so crucial. Uh, we got that on the screen. I think we're going to throw it up there. Uh, nope. The next one, there's like the circles with the person's, the letter numbers around it. But there we are. Perfect. That's the picture you want to take right there. When I'm interviewing a location pastor, which most, almost every time, by the way, they're, they're spiritual sons or daughters in the house already. When I'm looking for them, I'm looking for these things. So let me just go around that list. Keep it up there on the screen for just a second. I want them to have influence. In other words, I want people to be drawn towards them. They need to be a magnetic personality. They have a party at their house and 30 people show up. That's the person I want. I want them to be people that take initiative. They're self-starters and self-motivators. I want them to be innovative. In other words, you know what innovative means? They're, they're not coming to me saying, fix my problem. They're sitting there. They come up with solutions for problems. They have insight. They're able to see things that nobody else sees. Here's another one. They have integrity. Please let them have a healthy marriage. Let them not be addicted to pornography. Like you need some integrity there. You, they, you trust them to handle money. It's a big deal. They're going to be taking that offering bag on Sundays. Like that's a big deal. Uh, they're inspiring. You want them to be able to walk into a room, cast the vision of the day, and people are magnetic going, oh, I come alive. By the way, next to inspiring, I always wor use this word, they're positive. Nobody wants to be around a negative leader. So I look for that positive influence. And then I love this one, intuitive. They know what to do. By the way, we are a video venue site. So that means that everybody sees the same message being streamed video. So intuitive means they, they could just, they, they could see when problems are coming and they know how to react to them. So there's multiple times that the stream goes down. These, you have to have a leader that's able to jump up. Let me pull a message out of my pocket randomly. The trailer, the, the, the truck tr breaks down that's, that's bringing the trailer. The tire is flat. The dream teamers don't show up. You've got to have a person that can solve some problems. So take that list, outline it with that person that you're thinking about. By the way, I, I think this person for us has always been uh, normally a son or daughter of the house, normally someone that's led in a, a high capacity, and somebody that I can trust, and here's, here's a phrase, it's not up there, but it means all of those things together. It's they can carry the culture. So distance is, it gives a lapse in the culture. So our closest location for where we're at um, in our broadcast site is 12 minutes away. So from our South Tampa site to our Heights site is 12 minutes away. Culturally, they're the most similar. I don't have to fight for as much of that culture. You know why? Because it's 12 minutes away. That there's, there's times where we can go, hey, they need a nursery worker and we run them up 12 minutes that there. Does that make sense? But there's other locations. Our newest location is 30 plus minutes away. That's our furthest one for us. So when that happens, the further away, you've got to make sure that there's people on the ground that can see culture. What does culture look like? The signage is not correct. The verbiage, the way they're talking from the stage, do they talk the way you talk? Do they respond the way you respond? So we're going to make that work. All right. So we look for the person. So we look for the area. We look for the person. By the way, um, in a few minutes, I'm going to bring up our executive pastor who's over our expansion in our locations. He is the brains behind this operation. I'm only teaching what he's put into place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring him up and we're going to do some Q&A. So if you have any questions off of multi-site, I want you to throw it to us to help you on your scenario. Number three, we're going to look at a team. You can't launch it by yourself, so you got to develop a team. So the team needs to be uh, the exact same as what you're doing in your current site. So people go, Aaron, I'm a, I feel like I'm a year out. What, what do I need to do a year out? Here's the two things you need to do. You need to get as much money as you can get, and you can build as many team members as you can get right now. Because if you're going to send them out, you're going to have to have their, their, their spots being able to be filled. So everybody you're sending out right now, you're sitting there going, hey, work yourself out of a job. Recruit, recruit, recruit. It's not like, hey, location pastor, go in that community and build from scratch. It's not going to work because guess what they're going to do? They're going to go in that location. They're going to build something that looks different than what you're doing. And you're going to go under, why didn't that location work? Because it's different than what you're doing. What you're doing is working. So the only way to make that work is guess what? You got to send a lot of those people. Every time we've launched a location, let me just say this for a fact, we have always sent our best. Always. The broadcast location suffered for a season because we sent our best. So we just launched our North Tampa location. 
And I'll, I'll say this. I know some of the team members in the room. I think we've sent one of our best worship leaders we have up there. I, I know we sent our, one of our best kids teams. Like, I, I'm, I'm upset my kids don't get to go to that campus because their kids department's probably one of our best. So it sacrifices our broadcast to make that a win. Because the worst thing you could do is tell people to go watch a video 30 minutes away of you preaching and they get a subpar experience in everything else. And a lot of people sit there and go, oh, this is a way, it's, a, it's an overflow, it's an afterthought. No, 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 you're gonna buy in a multi-site is what we do. It's the best that you're gonna get. So when you come to Radiant, we actually are doing a whole campaign right now to try to get people off of our broadcast site. So I started outlining all the things you get from going to our campuses. The parking at our broadcast site is terrible. The, our, our kids' ministry is average at broadcast. The building is, is not great. It's an old movie theater. There, it's not a great experience at broadcast. By the way, it's a great experience everywhere else. So I want them to buy into that. I think it's very important. So you're building teams. Um, by the way, there's a location pastor flow chart. If you're looking at what that team's going to look like, we don't have a picture of it. We don't need, it's right there. But it shows the different p- team members we're trying to build from each location. We can talk through that during Q&A if you want to in a few minutes. So number one, we look at the area. Do we have an area? Check that off. Yes, we know the area God's calling us to based on the metrics earlier. Number two, do we have a person? Yeah, they, they outline those six I words. And yes, they, they check off the box. Do we have a team? Is that person building a team? Which by the way, we're starting to build that team about you know six to nine months pr- uh, beforehand. Number four, do we have the finances? If you're going to launch large the way we launch large, it costs some money. So our first site that we did, which made us multi-site, cost us about $250,000. Um, our most recent one cost us about $450,000. So you go, well, that sounds really expensive. It is, because to do it well costs money, but it works. So you have to make this a part of your vision. I, I will give you what, the way we raise the money. Maybe it'll work for you. Um, so what we do is we take two offerings every year that go towards the expansion of the church. So we take one in December, that's our year in legacy offering, that goes towards five areas, one of those being church expansion. So if we're launching a campus or building a building, it can go towards that, but it's all lumped into legacy, into the year giving. What our secret sauce has been, which people don't know about, but what we do that's our secret sauce is we also take a Mother's Day offering. That is our expansion offering. We've done it every year where we basically say, so this Mother's Day, we will launch, we will announce, hopefully, depending on our team, we will announce where our next locations will be. When we do that, we will take up an offering on that day to help pay for that. And usually that offering helps, uh, helps uh, the cost of that campus. Um, and then we start raising money, especially within that team that's on the campus. If you're going to large, large, make it, don't have a building. I've seen this before. Like you, this is a bad example, but you get the idea. You have this as your broadcast site. And then you have an elementary school with a portable screen that pops up. And you're like, hey guys, we're, we're running out of space here. Please go there. And they're like, I'm going to Disney World here. Like this is, this is like, this is awesome. Like this is, I'm, I'm at Walmart. Uh, let me say it right. I'm at Target, and, and you want me to go to the flea market up the street. <laughs> that, no wonder they don't, we can't build multi-site. So make your multi-site campuses the best thing that you do. So there's other ways to do that. All right, so you have the finances. We, we outline a budget for you guys. I think, you know, it's so contextualized between the different things, but in our budgets, it doesn't include personnel cost, I believe, um, in there, because we put it in in the church. They're kind of in the church already before we send them out. Normally when we launch a location, so I'll, I'll use early days instead of right now. Early days at a campus, we're launching with a full-time campus pastor. Uh, we're watch, launching with maybe a part-time location director, which is kind of doing all the, the ops and the behind the scenes and the trailer and the work. And then we're working with some stipend kids, worship, and production. Um, that's kind of the stipend behind the scenes. You're making $100, $150 a week. So that's kind of getting the ball off the ground. That's the minimum. Now we launch with a little bit more staff, but that's kind of the bare bones of it. So if you sit there and you go, well, we just have one guy, he can go, and all volunteers, it's going to be really, really tough unless your current site is the exact same way where they have no staff either because people will go to where the gathers, the big leaders are at. All right. Number five is do we have a space? 
Um, we, we launch every one of our locations in a portable setting. Why do we launch it in a portable setting? Because portable is uh, portable's cheap. I'll, I'll say it this way. People, uh, people, for some reason, get so frustrated with portable. Portable is, is sexy because portable, first of all, a portable reaches lost people because you're no longer in a church building. Secondly, portable is, um, you don't know if it's going to work, so you want to go portable because uh, it, uh, it, you're able to try it out before you invest millions into facilities and you have no clue the cost of permanent. So when people say, but I can rent a high school for $5,000 a month, but we can have our own storefront for $5,000 a month. You're not correct. High school, you don't fix the plumbing, you don't fix the AC, you don't repair the roof, you're not paying for the major insurance cost, you're, uh, you're not repaving the parking lot. When you go into that facility, just talk to Pastor Travis Jones, and you go into the facility, it costs some money. It's always, I'm telling you, in our permanent sites, it makes me so upset of everything that's breaking down. You have no clue the maintenance cost, the repair cost. What did uh, Nate Clark say? It's always going to cost longer than you think it's going to cost. It's, I mean, it's going to cost more than you think it's going to cost. It's going to take longer than you think it's going to take. And then what is this third one? And you're not an exception to that rule. That's the truth. And that is the reality. Find a space. So we find it portable. Our, our, best, our best locations have launched in high schools. They just, high schools have auditoriums. Um, elementary schools don't have auditoriums. They have like little seats with little toilets in little rooms with low ceilings. It's just not a big win. Middle schools are tough. Middle schools have auditoriums. Here's what middle schoolers, middle schools don't have. They don't have parking because no middle school has to drive. So you're only getting the parking lot for the teachers. High schools, you get both. I know community centers. And then here's the gold mine. I'm telling you, here's my prophetic thing. I think the next generation of churches, most of them are going to plant movie theaters because I don't see movie theaters recovering anytime soon. Like, they're, who's going to go to movies after this? We have discovered HBO Max and Disney Plus. Like, I'm not going back to a movie theater. So I think those places are desperate for churches. We had movie theaters trying to get us into that location when the whole world basically said you can't launch. Okay, so we're looking for space, and then we're looking for momentum. Momentum can't be measured, but it can be felt. It's one of those things behind the scenes where you go, oh man, there's buzz about us in the community. People are thinking about us. They're posting about us. We're creating that momentum. And by the way, um, momentum is built through the timeline. So uh, let me just give you a little bit of the ideal facility. I want to take about 10 more minutes and then we're going to open it up to Q&A. Ideal facility. Can, let me just run through some of this. Uh, throw those pictures up and I'll, I'll walk it through with some of them. Um, when it comes to, this is our newest location. All right, so this is, uh, this is our newest location. I want you just to see a couple things. You see all the signage. You see the person, uh, the flags that are against the road. We want to make it very visible to the community. So that's, you know, one of our dream teamers there. You see the cones. We're parking people. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, this is the outdoor. So you walk in. We have two different tents. So our orange tent is for guests. So you go there, you get your guest little VIP card. You learn about the church. Our gray tent right there is for connection. So that is where you get prayer. You get a Bible. You can uh, learn more about the church on your way out. So one is on the way in, one's on the way out. Kind of solution there. But you see, you walk in uh, to the audit to there, and then what do we? What's our next picture? All right, this is in the main auditorium. I mean, main lobby. Uh, you see that little. Uh, tithing envelope thing. Those have been game changers, by the way. You want to know where to get those? Write our team, and we'll help you with that. Uh, we have our, our graphics. This is a pre-service huddle that's making it happen. This is right in the main lobby of this. That's our newest location. Notice it's not overdone. It's not flags everywhere and, and pipe and drape everywhere. We're going to make it work with what we got. We do a lot of banners right there on the wall. Uh, next slide. Uh, all right, so this is, is this, this is North Tampa? I, I don't know. This is first week. It's upgraded in the last few weeks. So let's go to the next slide. Um, okay, there, there's North Tampa. So it's kind of the, the look. Um, big screen, lights on stage, the whole thing. Again, it's not over the top. Now we're installing equipment there. Uh, we got another picture of one of our locations where we kind of installed equipment. There's an, a, a, a location right there. Shows kind of the more upgraded experience of what we do. We're still, because of COVID, the school's very restricted on when we can get in. So we have a bunch of equipment we're still trying to do. Um, any other pictures we have? Uh, great, kids area. So then this is our big carrots area. This is like a big uh, uh, open um, 
cafeteria. So we do elementary kids there. Notice how in this room, we couldn't separate into different classrooms. That's the unique thing. Other locations all have their own classrooms. But this one is, look, you're going to go your dreamers or your one to two-year-olds. Your heroes are three to five-year-olds. And then your elementary or six plus right there. So you're able to drop your kids there. Look at them. They're having a great time. Our dream teamers are having a fun time. They're playing on the floor. Look at that. Every one of our dream teamers wears a mask. We, are, uh, we believe that all of our volunteers, are, they're required to wear masks during this season. And so uh, next slide. I don't know if we have anything else, but that's pretty awesome. So uh, I think that's pretty much everything. So that's kind of the, the behind the scenes of that newest facility right there. All right. Last uh, step four is execute. Execute is we got those six things in place. Now we're ready to pull the trigger. What does that look like? Well, we put together a timeline for you. I want to run through it very quickly. It might be hard to see some of it, but let's just throw it up there on the screen. This is, uh, you know, six to nine months. It's maybe even 12 months out. We're running metrics. You have your first interest meeting. This is me as a pastor saying, hey, we're going to North Tampa. Why don't you all come over and hang out? This whole thing, by the way, is on that playbook you got. Uh, it's on the, the timeline right there. So you can have it. Uh, we do core group meetings. This is people getting connected with our team. We're going to establish the facility, establish the budget. Notice we put established facility first and then established budget. Why? Because our budget for launch, it's contingent on our facility. Sometimes you have to buy chairs. Sometimes you, you have to buy a screen. Other places you don't have to buy a screen. So we're always going to find what is our facility and then what's the budget when it comes into that. So uh, we're going to place an order for all the signage. We're three months out. We're doing park events. We're working uh, with a team, at hospitality supplies. You can go through all of this list. Uh, look about one month out, uh, six weeks out. Let's start there. Six weeks out is where we now start the momentum. We're doing a worship night in the community. We are uh, doing some uh, serve events on the Saturdays before that. By the way, our approach is that we don't do a serve event in the community unless it is attached to awareness. So um, if we're going to do a serve event for these, for these campuses, so the purpose of the serve event is awareness in the community. So while we love the food shelter, the, the, you know, we, we love to feed, you know, the homeless at the local shelter, that wouldn't be an event we do pre-launch because pre-launch we want to be visible to the community because we want people to see who we are and how we're active in the community. Um, serve event. Then we're going to do some practice services. The two Sundays before, maybe even three Sundays before, our lease starts. So we always launch in two different seasons. I'll just tell you what they are. We launch in um, either, uh, we, have we have done an August launch. Traditionally, we do a September launch, which is the weekend after Labor Day. And then the other one is we have done a uh, January launch, which is the weekend after MLK weekend. Those are the two primary launch, which by the way, if you've gone through launch training with us at CMN. We say those are the two days to launch also. So the couple Sundays before that, what are we doing? We're doing practice. We're learning how to unload the truck. We are um, rolling it out. Um, they heard me. So our newest campus, uh, we didn't have all the equipment still because of COVID, it delayed everything. So they did run-throughs for everything. They unloaded this as two weeks pre-launch. And then they had a TV like this and they're all watching the sermon being streamed in. And I'm talking to our team from the broadcast site, just like it's a normal Sunday. It's just we didn't have their big screens and stuff. So you're going to do that two weeks out. One week out, again, same thing. Facebook events are live. You're, you're promoing it crazy. You're doing a mailer. We believe in mailers. Um, our church is called Radiant Church, but we, uh, so we don't own this company called Radiant Printing, even though I wish I did. That'd be awesome. But uh, we use Radiant Printing to go through a lot of that. I know there's a lot of organizations that do it. So we send out a mailer. So here's my thing for you guys is don't recreate the wheel. So I'm not going to come up with my super creative mailer. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a mailer that already works. So for you guys today, for one low price of entrance fee today, I have provided our mailer. So let's throw up the front of the mailer and take a picture of it, use it, steal it. If you want the graphics, you can do this. Look, look at this mailer. And we've done the same mailer for pretty much every launch we've done. And look at the front of this. This could change your life forever. Now, notice a couple things about this mailer that I think are a big win. One, look how happy I am on the top. No, that's not the win. Okay. Look at everybody smiling, the life change. Look at the diversity of the room, of the, the, the thing. Um, look at the name of the church. Most people on their mailers don't put their name on the front. I put my name on the front because I ha there's a great chance this is getting thrown away immediately, and I want them to subliminally already see the name. Radiant Church, Radiant Church, Radiant Church. 
I put the website on the front. I put the website, I believe it's two or three different times on the mailer because that's my primary goal. The front of the mailer is to get them to turn over to the back. That's the only dis reason. So look at the back of the mailer. We're pushing four things right there. We're pushing a safe and fun kids experience. Uh, we're pushing a, a relevant message. Or no, I'm not in a suit and tie in this mailer. So people automatically go, I know how I can dress when I come to that church. We're pushing dynamic worship. This is an exciting experience. And then look at that community where the people, they're all friendly and there's fun. A couple other things that I think are important about a mailer. Uh, it's a grand opening. Notice I didn't say the launch. Notice I didn't say our church plant. People use church language that doesn't make sense. What business do they say, hey, we're launching a new Chick-fil-A? It's a grand opening of Chick-fil-A. So we use grand opening for our, our, our expressions. North Tampa location. Um, uh, uh, no, I don't put campus. We fought this with our team. Um, it got bloody we, between campus and location. When I think campus, I think of a, a, a university. Uh, when I think of a location, I think of this is its own deal, its own place. So I want people to think this is the site, not a extension of what we're doing. So it's a location and it's got the date. Um, it's got the times. Notice what it doesn't have. It doesn't have a map. I get mailers sent to me all the time that have maps on them. Who is walking around with your mailer driving going, honey, it says turn right here. Like this is it. Like turn. It's the stupidest thing. Don't put a map on your mailer. Nobody needs that anymore. Nobody's getting out their atlas going, all right, let's find this place. So put the name of your church which, by the way, and I'll just say this because we are not the heroes in this, with everything going on, we forgot, and this is my fault, we forgot to register with Google right before we launched this location. So, you know, people put in Gaither High School, they get it. But normally you want to launch, you want to do this, and it takes about a month in advance that you register your church is at that location so that they can put in Radiant Church and it says North Location and they can go there. Does it make sense? All right. That's our execute. You got the timeline up there. And then I'll close with this is it ends with evaluate. It starts with evaluation and it ends with evaluation. Why is that? Because it's not going to be great the first time. What, what worked, what didn't work? How do we make it better? We're six weeks into North Tampa and guess what? We're tweaking every single Sunday. How are we making it better? How are we making it better? Celebrate big, uh, make it a big win. And then um, start evaluating regularly what are we doing so that we can uh, do it better. Because listen, you're, you have more in you than you think you have in you. And, uh, you know, like there's more campuses than you think. I'm, I'm so excited. I love our, fifth, uh, our, our, our North Tampa location. I love it. And I'm so happy. But I want to make it better because I know out of that campus, we're going to eventually launch multiple other campuses. So we got to make it better every single time. All right. So I'm going to give it to Pastor. I'm going to bring up Pastor Bobby. He's the brains behind this operation. And we're going to run around. We have a, yeah. So we're going to run around. And, um, and any questions you have, guys, have on launching your first location, as specific as you want, as detailed, or as general, doesn't matter. Ask away. Rip it apart. And, yep, we got Jordan coming. For these other locations, do they have their own pages? And then uh, on on the website, is it all linked together? Do you have separate addresses? Talk about that, please. Uh, we we have another executive pastor that kind of oversees a lot of the digital space. Uh, but the short answer is that yes, we do have um, Facebook pages for every location, but not Instagram. Um, and now the our main page still is the primary driver. So location pages for Facebook specifically are more community driven, and so there's a lot more. Um, like on our main social media, we wouldn't have a lot of interaction. It's a lot more information. Whereas on the location pages, the idea is more interaction. Uh, for the website, we actually have one website, weareradiant.com, and then we have location pages. You can go to locations, and you can see our campus pastor. You can see the events. A lot of us are doing the same things, uh, but there is a tab for each location to have 
almost like a page within the website. But then, um, but only one Instagram. Uh, we're toying with the idea of what that looks like now that a lot more people uh, that are in our church are on that space versus Facebook. Uh, so we're looking at hashtags versus pages um, just because people have to manage them. And something that's important is guarding the culture online. Yeah, and being very cl- careful that you don't differentiate on your website of main site versus campuses. They're all a main site. We don't even use the word broadcast. That's internal. So on our, on our website, you can see it there. It has South Tampa, Brandon, Heights, Online, uh, St. Pete, North Tampa. It has them all there. And then you click on it, and then it gives more details about that location, who the location master is, how to get involved, when the next steps classes are, all those kind of details. When you mentioned about uh, finances and budgeting for your launch, you, you mentioned your recent launch was about 400 uh, K, whereas starting out 250. What do you kind of portion that to? Where do those finances go for that launch? If you could give us more detail there, how it breaks down. Yeah, for sure. So a lot of it is the space. Uh, so the, the rental cost is, a, is always going to be depending, that's going to always be a fluctuating cost. Um, we invest a lot on, because we are video venue, uh, we've started to invest a lot more in AVL. Again, our executive guy over production and worship and creative would say we're not there yet. Uh, but that is where we spend a lot of our money just because that is the main auditorium. Not that it's more important than any other ministry, you know, kids, students, etc. Uh, but it's where it's where the, the engine of that location is going to be financially. So we invest heavily into our production because we want it to be a good experience. So we give them great produ- projectors, screens, um, you know, state-of-the-art equipment. And then a lot of it is just a lot of little things add up. So you got to think a vehicle, a trailer, uh, storage. So all of our locations have to pay for storage off-site or um, maybe even dropping a container on site. Um, and then like even the little things of kids ministry. So now we've done this a couple of times. So we've kind of fine tuned exactly what it takes us, but all of that adds up, you know? Uh, so the picture that you saw there, which is unique to our church currently, but we love it is that we went away from classrooms and we're in an, uh, a cafeteria. So we had to purchase signage and those play panels to kind of build out kids. And so it was honestly all of the little things adding up. But the big purchase is always going to be AVL for sure. And then um, the signage, which Radiant Printing, again, not to plug them, again, they have no affiliation with Radiant other than their, our friends, uh, do a phenomenal job on signage. And I'll just say this. Um, we, our broadcast site has continually upgraded every year. So our goal is with a location, we want it to be comparable or better than broadcast. So our standard is where are we at with broadcast? How do we make them just as good? So that's where it gets expensive. What we've done in the past, and it's a mistake I've made, but it's what I had to do is, this will do for now and we'll upgrade later. And what we end up doing is we end up spending way more than the few hundred thousand we've spent to upgrade because then every time we're going, okay, now we need to get them comms. Now we need to get them an actual lighting set. Now we need to get them a Nord. We didn't get them a Nord before. Let's get them a Nord now. For some reason, we always have to buy Nords. I don't understand that company, but... That's a keyboard for those yeah. of you that might... So anyway, so it's, it's spend it now or spend it later. And you only get one shot at a first impression. Yes. So my whole thing is, is you're going to have the most people in the room at launch, not six weeks or six months after when you go, now people are showing up. No, 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 no. You got that one shot. So we want to make it really good the first time. Great question, though. Yep. We got multiple questions over here. Jordan fell asleep on us. Where is he? Jordan? Uh, I don't know. So we can go back here. Oh. Someone knows, Jordan, we can just fire him. We'll, we'll be good. <laughs> so one of the questions I have is uh, centralized staff. Yeah. So obviously you, uh, you're you sending out a, a bare bones staff to kind of get you going, yeah. but centrally who's supporting all of these campuses to make sure that culture's staying there? Uh, you know, is it one worship guy that kind of oversees all of that, one kids guy that oversees all of that, um, or is, is that really being placed on the campus itself? For sure. That's a phenomenal question um, that we've continued to wrestle with. 
and which is a whole other session. Bring your boxing gloves to that one, because um, that is that is a control. So the the quick thing, if you're you're new to multi-site, what he's talking about is there's decentralized command. That's all command happening in the campuses, and there's centralized command. So decentralized would be more autonomous, whereas centralized command is kind of coming all from one place and going out. There's a lot of different ways to do it, and no one way is better than the other. Hilton and Marriott are both successful and doing really well financially. Um, so centralized or decentralized both work. Uh, a lot of it, not to put pressure on lead pastors, but a lot of it comes from the vision of the top. Like what's the vision? Um, the, the route that we've taken is in the beginning was heavy centralized. Uh, so we, um, at two campuses, you know, our, our worship director at our second site still working a full-time job, basically there on Sundays. So our worship pastor at our broadcast site was kind of overseeing worship. Um, as we've expanded, and you fill in the blank for all the ministries that your church would have. Now we're at a place where we've become more decentralized, where the central staff are the specialist. And the campuses are thinking all team development, pastoral care, and execution of the play that Central has designed. That takes a little bit of time to get there, and but, but in reality, so our broadcast site still has some campus staff members who are operating centrally, if that makes sense. Um, now, now we're at a place where every hire is hoping to get all of the campuses focused on people versus systems. Um, but again, there, there's a bunch of different ways to, to do that. What I would recommend is what do you have? You know, you know, for example, David, I've mentioned him a few times, David and I were basically the campus staff at our broadcast site. And then as we've grown, we've become the central staff overseeing those positions. And a lot of our team here are the central team um, that kind of oversee our campuses. What we've shifted into now is campus staff report directly to their campus director or campus pastor for the sake of care of building the campus, but for example, our student pastors are still driving student vision to their student directors because the campus pastor is a generalist trying to build. So let me, let me back up a little. The campus pastor is a senior pastor in their community that does not preach. And so they're thinking as a senior pastor. So they're, they're resourced by Central. They want their student director at their campus coming up with vision of, yeah, the students team, this is what we're doing. This is the outreach we're doing. This is what we're doing for the schools. This is how we're expanding into more groups. Hey, this, just so you know, campus pastor, this is what Central Kids is kind of bringing down the pipeline. We're going to redo a curriculum. We're doing X, Y, Z. Um, all of, so really, Central is still creating the vision, and the campus pastor is just thinking growth in their community. It doesn't need to change for a few years. You need it you, when it's first campus it's there everybody's basically central doing all the work for everything at on site let me let's go to the next question because we have got a lot by the way we put an org chart in in the leader playbook that'll kind of show what an outline looks like and then you got to think from that as you scale if you see where there's a kids team member their direct line is to their location pastor their dotted line is to the central kids director that's how we do it yes sir so when you guys first find the location the yep. plan is you're going to launch the new campus you send your best yes there is that for just the short amount of time is that and no that's the new home as far as the leader goes they're there this people is what they'd leave. people do what important people do so if important people leave to go to that campus people will go there so I'm sending my influencers I'm sending the magnetic personalities I'm sending people that go if they're going there I got to go there so our goal is that when you're at a location, you're there for life. Now, the vision is we're sending you. You're go. You're part of that thing. That's good. Great question. Yep, go ahead. Well, first of all, thank you for the boost you've been giving us. Uh, I just as a young preacher, I'm excited. Like, I want to launch 30 campuses by next week. It's awesome. It's going to be exciting. I'm kidding. Got it. But anyways, uh, one of the questions that I do have is, um, so I know two of the main elements in a service is worship, like the music, and then the preaching. So I know that when you launch, um, I wanted to ask you for the worship side, what's your budget for the worship team? Like, uh, who would you pay? Um, how much of it is volunteers? And what does that look like? Thank you. 
So I don't, I don't want to um, exaggerate this, but I'll, I'm, I'm pretty much positive, okay? So with five physical locations, we have an online location too, but five physical locations, worship teams at every campus, I believe there could have been an exception. David's here on the front row. I don't believe we've ever paid a musician, period. In the history of our church, maybe, we, maybe there's been a one-off of a drummer we've had to hire in. Who we pay is the team builder. Who is the person that's gathering the person on the team? So we would start a location with going, our first one with one of our most dynamic worship leaders was a girl named Candace. We're sending our best. Candace, you got a full-time job, but we're giving you $150 a week. And your job is to do a practice on a Thursday night with the team, which by the way, you're going to have to drive to broadcast and do practice because you're setting up in a high school that we don't have. Yeah. So you're doing a practice once a week and you're running Sundays. So that means... I'm not waking up stressed about worship because I'm paying someone to do that. Now, she's not paying singers and musicians and, you know, those kind of things. So we don't pay that. We do invest in the team builder. And we've made that a thing. We don't, you know, we're, our goal is not to pay kids people. It's to pay a kids dream teamer. Now, we've had to break that rule multiple times with different things that's happened. But we, we pay team builders. What are the benefits or cons, I guess, you do live worship, you do live kids, you do live I was youth. waiting for the question. Thank you. Everybody texts me and they ask me. No, everybody I know, was afraid I to know. ask. So. so what are the benefits? Or, what do you think the benefits are? Thank you, brother. Are? Um, so there's, there's a lot of benefits. One of my primary benefits uh, is that a campus pastor, so those of you that are lead pastors, love you guys, so thankful for all you do. There's an element to it takes time to develop content for Sunday, yep. and Sunday is always coming. So we have one of our best campus pastors, all of them are great, uh, on, here on the front row, and versus 20 hours or 15 or 30, whatever amount of time it would take him to develop a sermon or a sermon series, he's building his team, he's pastoring his community, he's connecting, you know, we have campus pastors who are the chaplain of the, the police um, force of the fire, like they're, they're, they're an unavoidable presence in their community, pastoring and developing their team. Say that phrase one more time. This is the phrase we use for our location pastors. They are an unavoidable presence. Unavoidable in their presence in their community. And so they have um, to be. And so, like this last Sunday, we had a campus pastor preach, but he came to broadcast and preach to the whole church. Uh, and then a few times a year, we'll have campus pastors preach live. Um, but that's the primary, that's one of my primary variables. You might have a different take. I'll just say this as one, you got to be very, very, very clear of what is worth duplicating for your church. So I don't say this for me personally. I just believe in our church, we have a few things that were worth duplicating that, that um, were our distinguishing mark. And for years, it's been, I'm, I'm not the best preacher, but I'm a, I'm a really good vision caster. So I preach vision. So I realized that can't be duplicated the way I want it to be duplicated. Hillsong, um, if, if someone asked what is Hillsong's like thing that they are known for the world, everybody would say the same thing. It's, it's music. Like that's what they do. So they have different preachers at every location because their distinguishing mark is music. Like it's Hillsong music. You're not going there and hearing Bethel. You hear Hillsong. So in their way is what's your distinguishing mark? So for us, it was we present central vision from video to every location. And then there's different times throughout the year that location pastors are preaching, but central content brings the whole church. And uh, I, I'm watching you guys. Like everybody's looking up there the whole time right now. And our room is um, a, a little bit smaller than this. Um, so we have the same columns, but it's very, but uh, five rows in, they're still looking at the screens. It's, it's all in our mind that video doesn't work. By the way, um, uh, COVID has showed us video works. Yeah. And if I could say one yeah. thing, because the pushback that I've gotten on that is, well, how are you, you know, is it all about the man and how are you developing preachers? Ask Travis Jones up here who's hosting, who preaches every weekend. It's a lot harder to host a two minute welcome to a church after a song or two or to lead a giving talk or to do a ministry moment when you've got a countdown clock of 90 seconds versus having, you know, 25, 30, 35 minutes to build a whole case and present. So there's a lot of ways to develop communicators in the campus pastor seat or just hosting a service without preaching a message. Okay. We got a few more minutes. I thought so there's a few more hands. Yeah, go ahead. We'll try to make them quick. Sorry about that. Yes, sir. So he asked you a question about your uh, budget, how you broke it down into the worship area. And you just said something that was astonishing to me that you have never paid a musician. 
Uh, so my thing is, how did you? So how did you find those people that were able to be willing <laughs> the way you have described? Because that is a very I'm, so, I'm seeking to. By do that. the way, when we launched our church, um, one of my best friends. It's one of our closest friends. We were all in our, each other's weddings. We brought him in. He, he's not here right now, but he wouldn't ha- ha- mind me saying this. He's not the best worship leader. He's probably one of our best team builders I've ever ha- known. So what I did is I said, the most difficult area that I don't know about is worship. So I need you to develop the team, even though I know it's like, because I just need you to get volunteers. And he recruited a David who's on the front row, now our executive leader overall experience. He just recruited team builders. I mean, people that were high caliber leaders on the team. So your primary person that you're putting over worship at any location, their primary thing should be how do they gather musicians? Good musicians gather good musicians. They attract. They're just like, they're, they're bugs to a light. It's just like, oh, you play really well. well we're putting out an album um, in a few weeks, which plugged Radiant Worship. We're putting out an album in a few weeks, and very little of it has to do with creating content for our church. It has a lot to do with the fact that we want to be known in the music world in the Tampa Bay area. And you know what it's going to do? It's going to attract other worship things. And they come to us all the time, and we hear it. Hey, that church is going to pay me $600 a week. What can y'all pay me? Nothing. But we got vision for you. This is the team to be on. And they come with us. Hi, I'm David, uh, Los Angeles. Uh, I know you had mentioned... uh uh, theaters being one of their best options and high schools being a great option. LA, it's been closed. No Everything's closed. Yep. You know, schools are just, actually teachers are just going back to schools right now. But um, I'm just curious about any, any other options you've been thinking about. If there was a plan B yeah. that wasn't, um, wasn't a school or a movie theater? Yeah, for sure. So COVID has made things a little crazy. What I'm hearing now, we fortunately we're in Florida. COVID doesn't exist in Florida. Um, so we're a little lucky, but we do have a lot of friends that are closed down. Um, is that hotel, they hotel like convention rooms, conference rooms, because the hotel business and, and the hospitality business has gotten hit very hard. So they are giving away their rooms. And some of the churches have done very, very well, like a good setup, not like a second rate setup. You could do kids, you could do, so if you just bare bones it, kids, main auditorium, and then maybe some offshoot stuff if that's a big part of your thing, but hotels are great. Seven day Adventist churches. So we, uh, we went into a, our brand new location was in a high school. We got kicked out of the high school. Uh, nearby was a seventh day Adventist church. We used them on Sundays. It's been an amazing relationship. I will just say this, not to prophesy it, but I truly believe there's going to be a lot of these churches that are going to shut down because that, and this is why build great relationships with those people because they're going to want to know like who can take this. We have already heard from one of our locations, there's a church right up the street, it's going to be available in May, and we're like dying to get it. So uh, I think there's going to be a lot of those places. Go ahead, Jim. Aaron, um, what would you say, this is kind of from Travis and I. What are the multiplying killers? Yeah. What prevents a church from multiplying? They're never going to multiply. Uh, they're not raising up enough leaders, so they don't have a leadership strategy. So early on, we created what we call Radiant Leadership Academy. And uh, what does that mean? You're going to come and hang out with me one night a week, and we're going to learn culture. Because i got to get you close. Uh, uh, one of the best churches in America is, uh, is Highlands in Birmingham. Chris Hodges, for the first, I think, seven or eight years, he doesn't advertise this because they're like, they, they never say they did Wednesday night services other than first Wednesday. It's not true. For seven years straight, he had Wednesday night. Some of the days he had him in his home and all he did was teach leadership. So what he, people don't know is he spent seven years every Wednesday night teaching Bible studies and leadership in his home and in a little bowling alley when it outgrew that. And people go, you're just so lucky you have all these leaders. No, no, no. You don't, you don't attract leaders. You build them. You build them in your house. So build leaders and create lots of margin right now. We launched during the pandemic. You know why? Because we just had tons of margin to go. We got the money to do it. And then the last thing is this, and I'll throw it to you for the, anything you have to say after this. A, a killer is that you are just not a, uh, how does Groeschel said it? He says it, a cult-like tendency of like the craving for your culture. He says every church that is, is multiplying has that cult-like, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Identity. It's like, it's like they're cultish about their culture. That's what it is. It's, you cut them, and for us, you would bleed orange. 
because you just, it's, it's, this is, we do this, we do this, we do this. It's not my department, it's our church. It's not my area, it's our church. We do this, we speak this way, we have our language. Who is one of the best in the world at this is Vu in Miami. They actually have a whole culture guide. We created our own culture guide we're finishing up where it's just, this is how we talk, this is what we do. And you go, well, that sounds crazy. It's, it's, if you don't guard it, you can't multiply it because the further you multiply it out, you want it to look like it is at home. I would say uh, I agree 100%. The other two things is um, a lack of risk taking yes. uh, because, yes. and, uh, and too much control. Yes. Uh, okay. we, we know where we're at. We're in a church leadership. We have a problem holistically with control. Um, so Pastor Aaron is a great example. He takes a lot of risk and he releases control. And so we did have margin for North Tampa. And I say this uh, because we've done a good job, but we have never been ready for any of our locations. We took a risk and we built it along the way. If, if we would have, been, it's like the couple that is waiting for the baby, waiting for everything to be just right before they have a kid. We've always launched out even when it felt a little uncertain. I'll, oh, I have one minute left, so I'll just say this. Radiant Church, you might not have ever heard of us and that's okay, we're not here to impact the world, we're here to impact Tampa Bay, that's our vision. But I'll just say this, we want to help you. So Bobby and I are working with our team sometime in August. We're going to host church planners, I mean uh, pastors at Radiant. We're going to take a, uh, a Tuesday and a Wednesday. You're going to see our different sites. Uh, we're we're going to announce our date in, in the next couple weeks. You're going to be able to come in. You're going to be able to connect with our whole team. Um, it'll be open to you guys to come in. You just got to pay your way to get there, and then we'll, we'll host you. And we, we feel called to do this, to help you guys plant your first campus outside of your main site. Let us help you as much as we can, and we want it to be a blessing. Love you guys. Thank you all for coming to this session. Perfect.